Uh, tomorrow, that's going to be November 14th, Basil Chapman has a subscriber only webinar. So that means if you are a subscriber to the opening call newsletter, you got to get in the den and you got to come join this. This is at 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's right after the end of programming tomorrow. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, not to worry, you can get in right now and you'll still be able to join if you can't make it to the 4 o'clock, 5.30 p.m. Uh, kind of time slot, uh, but you still want to see what's going on. Don't worry, we're going to have that recorded for you and uploaded. We are joining right now by Basil Chapman. Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. What do we got looking at? I'm, I'm really looking forward to this uh, webinar as we get closer to the day here. Yeah, it's getting closer, but what's really fascinating about this is, so the title is Sectors and Stocks for the Next Market Phase uh, for Opening Call Subscribers, uh, this webinar, it's a free webinar for subscribers, uh, Thursday, November the 14th, 4 o'clock to 5.30. I like to do an hour and a half because I really like to get into the nitty gritties rather than just superficially talk about things. So it's really an educational uh, aspect to it as right. well as what do I buy? What do I sell? But it was fascinating as I'm going through just reviewing the slides that I have already. And I'm going to have far less slides this time. I'm going to really go to charts, a lot of charts that we want to look at. I'm looking at what I did in July. And there the slide said sectors that should be part of 2024's next big rally. Besides the obvious, that's the Dow, the S&P, the QQQ, the XLK, IGV, SMHs, that's the semiconductors and the IWM. We have the XLP, the S&P financials have been strong, and the KRE, the regional banks, which are now playing catch up. So we actually, we, we had in the financials, we had Bank of America, we've still got it's done fabulously. But I wanted to add the regionals because I think it's so important that this particular phase now has the regional banks, it's just important for the economy as I read it. And we have uh, some positions in the KRE, and they're doing very nicely. So this is still from July. It turns out that it is now uh, as relevant today in November as it was in July, maybe even more so. The second one is the IAI broker dealer ETF. Well, we've had that since the low of 2020. Uh, 2020 uh, in the 45 area, and it's it's at least uh, four or five times uh, up from there. But we've also added um, Robinhood. So that was an important thing because in that particular phase, I wanted to see if the market was going to be strong. You have to see the broker-dealer area yep. start to move up as well, and we've seen that. So what, what we are missing – um, number three is the AI artificial intelligence. We've had that for a long time. It's done extremely well. That's the ETF. It's AIQ is a symbol. But I've been wanting to add hack and bots. We once had bots, which is a robotic uh, ETF, and we did really well, and then we got out of it, never got back in, and hack, which is a cyber area, haven't got back in, and, and they are doing really well. And I'm going to be discussing, what do you do when something gets away from you, and you say you just throw your hands up and you say, I don't know, I can't buy it here. Totally. Well, there are things that you can do, and that's what we're going to discuss. So the I, IWM, the RUT 2000, I said the XL, the S&P has done fabulously. You should see a catch-up trade in the <clears throat> Russell 2000. Well, we bought the Russell 2000 at the low in August, the day after the low, actually. We've been in it. We've added to it. And I think that this is an area that's playing catch-up. Then we've got the IWC, which is the microcaps. I'll be talking about that. If you don't have a position in that, we might consider the IWB, which is the Russell 1000, has done fabulously, and the MDY, which are the mid-caps, have done very well. Then I'm looking at different packages where the ETF or the, the position that you want to take has already done the work for you. So I'll still be looking at ARKK. That's the innovation fund. We haven't got into it, although I've liked it a lot. It's done well. And a lot of these charts are making, I'll talk about it in just one second, this big cup formation. And uh, so PAVE is another one, infrastructure which is very important. It kind of goes together with the hack AIQ and the boss uh, ETFs that I was talking about. So um, I have some positions that I'm looking at that are possibilities in the power area for PAVE, the infrastructure ETF. Uh, so we'll be looking at then battery stocks. We haven't done anything for a while with battery stocks. Oh, yeah. So I want to just in the, uh, mo the moment that we've got here, I wanted to show you something very interesting. So if you're looking at the just as a sector that we could be looking at, and that is, 
if you're looking at Ford, look how badly Ford has done. It made $25 high back in January of 2022. Yeah. Here it is at 11. Toyota Motors, you can go through all of them. But wait a minute. There's one company that did not go all EVs. They did. They still have a lot of gasoline engines, and that's General Motors. And look at this cup formation. I've shown it all week. We've been looking at this formation. It says if there is a cup formation that's making higher highs and higher lows, there's a really good chance it's going to test the left side high, and that's at 67.21, January of 22. It plummeted down to 26, or more than cut in half. So General Motors is looking very attractive here. What do you do? It's at a recovery high. Is this where you buy it? Well, I'll be discussing that sort of thing because I think it's really important for both my subscribers and for new subscribers. What do I, history is one thing. We've got 40, 50, even 100% gains in some of our positions. That's got nothing to do. It's, all, you know, it's like your next meal. Can you produce the same quality? Right. So we're going to do our best for subscribers, new subscribers, to be able to add two positions or to get positions we haven't had before that are really showing uh, a tremendous technical veracity. Look at Disney. Disney's been oh, yeah. horrible. Yes, it but has. For the first time, Disney's are starting. Look at that cup formation in the weekly chart using my technique, left side, right side. Um, it could try for the 106s over the next week, and it's trading at 102. And even if it does it, then what do you do? That's a, a recovery high. So I'll be discussing that. I'm not, I'm not afraid to go to all the oldies and input, include them with the new ones. We love it. Basil, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at uh, both 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you very much, Jacob. Have a great evening. You too, Basil. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.